U.S. auto workers are now on strike. Record profits equal record contracts. It's our time, and, and we all we want is our share of equity. We're not asking to be millionaires. We're not asking to join the billionaire class. We're asking for our fair share of the fruits of our labor. Negotiations between the United Auto Workers Union and the big three, General Motors, Ford and Stellantis, failed to reach an agreement on Thursday. Now workers across three plants in three states have walked off the assembly lines. The union wants a 40 percent hourly pay increase, among other demands. The big three countered with a wage increase of roughly 20 percent. That's not good enough for the union, and it doesn't appear to be good enough for the president of the United States either. The companies have made some significant offers. But I believe they should go further to ensure record corporate profits mean record contracts. Canadian auto workers are also staring down a strike deadline. Lana Payne is a national president at Unifor, the union representing Canadian auto workers at Stellantis, Ford, and General Motors. Lana, it's good to talk to you again. Great to be with you, David. So, auto workers are striking in the U.S. The deadline for negotiations for Canadian auto workers is Monday. What are the chances that Canadian auto workers could be on strike next week? Well, we're going to do everything we can here to get a collective agreement. Uh, we are still at the bargaining table. Uh, I'm still at it. Uh, our team is still at it. And uh, we've got uh, three days to go here. And uh, we've made some progress, David, uh, particularly at our sub tables and our local tables. Uh, that's been very encouraging to see. And uh, obviously, as you know, uh, we rejected the, the first two uh, economic offers uh, from Ford Motor Company. Okay, so three days to go, you're still at it, and, and some progress, as you say. The gap in the U.S. is pretty large, right? Like 20% offer versus a 40% demand. What can you tell us about where the gap is right now on this side of the border? Uh, for sure. I mean, rejecting two offers like that tells you that uh, we've, got, we've got some ground to cover here as well. Uh, our priority these are a little bit different, uh, obviously, than the United States. We have different collective agreements. Uh, we're going through a transition, as, as they are as well, but we're making sure here that, and this has been one of our priorities, that our members are protected during this transition period, uh, that uh, during plants uh, being retooled, uh, that we have strong income security. Mm -hmm. uh, but our number one issue in Canada is pensions. Uh, our members have not had a, an improvement in their pension plans since 2007, uh, so we're working very hard at this. Uh, to, to, to change that right now. And uh, hopefully we'll get there uh, by midnight on Monday. If not, we have an extremely uh, overwhelming strike mandate from our members. Okay, so we, we saw U.S. President Joe Biden weighing in there, tipping his hat, it sounds like, in favor of workers today, saying record profits should mean record contracts. I know it's different countries, but you're dealing with the same companies. What do you make of President Biden's comments and the impact it could have on the whole auto sector discussion? I, I believe it was very helpful, uh, obviously, for him. And he's had an advisor, uh, you know, connected to these negotiations in the United States. Uh, obviously, he, uh, he wants to make sure that uh, uh, American workers are benefiting uh, from, from the, the huge profits that these automakers are, 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 uh, are earning right now. And uh, from our perspective, the same thing. I mean, we're seeing this across many sectors of the economy. Corporate uh, Canada is doing very, very well. And uh, our goal at every single bargaining table is to make sure uh, that working people are able uh, to, to get a share of that. So, so the strike in the U.S. is limited at this point, but the UAW president, Sean Fain, he, he's not ruling out pulling all 146,000 auto workers, you know, off the assembly line and putting them on the picket line. That would be hugely disruptive on both sides of the border because of the interconnectedness. So if you get a deal, but they're still out and it escalates, I, I mean, what, what are you looking at here in terms of its impact on your members and the sector in this country? Yeah, depending on how large uh, the strike gets in the U.S., we could have an impact for sure on on Canadian operations and on our members who who uh, uh, work across the Detroit Three here and also in auto parts facilities. Mm -hmm. And the same is true, by the way, if we have a strike in Canada, that would impact uh, American operations as well. Uh, for example, uh, at the Ford plant in Windsor, we make uh, the Ford uh, F-150 engines. Uh, so the industry is right. very interconnected. And uh, either way, uh, there would be an impact on both sides of the border. So, so one of the arguments that the big three are making uh, in, in the United States is that they can't give the UAW what it's looking for because they have to invest billions of dollars in electric vehicle manufacturing to be part of that transition uh, that the industry is undergoing. What do you say to that argument from them on the U.S. side? And is that the argument they're making with you here on the Canadian side? 
I, I mean, of course, they're making that argument. Uh, they, they have to make that argument. The transition is going to cost them billions and billions of dollars. There's no doubt about it. It and uh, but they're making billions and billions of dollars. So and and both uh, levels of government in Canada and in the U.S. have have come forward with incentives to help with that transition as well. So I would uh, point that out very clearly, and we're very aware of that here in Canada. But also. This transition does not work without our members, David. Uh, it is going to be their skills and their dedications that make that really make this transition a success. And and that's been uh, my message to Ford and and to all of the the automakers in Canada. Okay, Lana Payne, National President of Unifor, thanks for your time today. Thank you.